Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. I've been saying for quite a while that I really firmly do believe that there will be individual cryptocurrencies that have trillion dollar plus market caps uh, in, in the coming years. And I don't know if that means literally a few years or a decade. I, I can't even, I can't know what the, the timeline will be, but I believe that's coming. I mean, hell, you can just look at gold. That's one asset that has a market cap of what, close to $10 trillion, nine or $10 trillion as I record this. And then you've got the entire crypto asset class at barely over $500 billion. Well, my gosh, it's, it, that's, that's only because the asset class is in its nascency, but things are picking up speed here. And so, you know, in the case of XRP, if, if it's going to have true staying power, given that it's solving a multi-trillion dollar problem, is it that weird to think that if it is truly globally adopted for, you know, specifically as a bridge currency. Is it that weird to think that it on its own could have a trillion dollar market cap? I certainly don't think so. That's, that's my humble opinion. And to be clear, I don't have a financial background. I'm not offering financial advice. So definitely don't buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. But happy to share my everyday Joe Schmo opinion. And I believe it's reasonable. So as long as I continue to see real world adoption, I'll continue to be bullish AF on XRP. And in the short term, you know, fundamentals aside, XRP is simply following the price action of Bitcoin anyway. But I wanted to run through this new piece from the Daily Hodl titled, Ripple's Head of Global Institutional Market Says XRP, Addressing Multi-Trillion Dollar Market, Recommends Barbell Strategy for Crypto Investors. But uh, before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap the like button, I would definitely appreciate the support. But don't get all smashy smashy with the damn thing. You might break it. And if you do, just know this, you are liable for the repair or replacement of the like button. And that can be pricey. I know, I know, it's 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 a tough love type of thing, but that's that's how we're rolling up here on the, the Moon Lambo channel. So just, just be cautious. And also go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel, which is the best channel on all of the YouTubes. And I assure you, there is genuine science behind that. All right, into this piece now. Ripple's head of global institutional markets is offering her take on the crypto markets and the value propositions of Bitcoin and XRP. <clears throat> Excuse me. In a new interview with Barron's and Grayscale, Brianne Madigan notes the rising number of institutional investors entering the crypto markets and says anyone looking to invest in the space should consider use cases and utility. And so look, to me, and I want to be clear on this because I know there are new people in here that might not have heard this before, but I think it matters. Like my entire investment thesis is that utility matters and will win the day. I just don't think that enough people give a damn about it. As we're sitting here towards the tail end of 2020, you can see uh, the cr entire crypto market more or less, it just moves together, right? And so to me, that just indicates that people are not sufficiently parsing out the differences between cryptocurrencies. They're just, in a general sense, betting on the space here. Now, that's not literally true for everybody. Like, for instance, me and perhaps you, if you're listening to a channel like this, maybe you do care about the actual use case. And there is, I admit, there's a reason that XRP has been, you know, among top coins in terms of market cap for almost eight years to this point. And it's because there are enough people that are recognizing the importance of it. But still, you know, it, it doesn't matter because not sufficiently because XRP does just simply follow the price action of Bitcoin. But still, I don't know when that's going to change. I don't know when people will start to uh, place a greater importance, uh, you know, in terms of their buying and selling activity. They'll start really focusing on utility more and making that decision. And I don't know how quickly that, that change is going to come. So I'm still only willing to invest in cryptocurrencies that are actually solving a real world problem, which luckily is the case for XRP. Anyway, the piece continues. Uh, Madigan highlights Bitcoin's potential growth as a store of value that competes with gold and says XRP's high transfer speed and low cost gives it a trillion dollar use case in the global payments market. And here's a quote. So for people who are newer coming in, take a look at a few individual crypto assets, understand their utility, their core value proposition, what problem are they solving? Look at the total addressable market market there. Yeah, exactly, which is why I think that most <laughs> cryptocurrencies, because they're like, what, over 7,000 now, almost all of them are going to go the way of the dodo. My favorite extinct avian creature. 
It's uh, and, and you know what it's going to look like. It's just going to result in um, delisting from exchanges as liquidity dries up. And when will that happen? I don't know the timeline, but it will happen when people begin purchasing only cryptocurrencies that actually solve a real world problem, which is why I think that this makes all the sense in the world right here. What uh, what Brian's stating here. And here's the rest of her quote. For example, in payments because of trapped capital, there's trillions and trillions of dollars of market opportunity that XRP as a digital asset is solving for. So that's a huge addressable market. So there you would see a driver for value creation. For Bitcoin, look at the market cap of gold and look at the market cap of Bitcoin. There's still tons of room, but there, there, uh, but will there be a volatility between here and when we see a top for Bitcoin? Absolutely. So my general view is we're still in the super early stages of this market. While it's very promising to see institutional investors and large Fortune 500 companies coming in and putting their treasury cash into Bitcoin and other crypto assets, this is all promising, but there will be short-term volatility in individual coins. Yeah, exactly. And that's why my, my strategy is to buy and hold. I've been dollar cost averaging in uh, for, for nearly three years into, into XRP specifically, and I, I haven't worried about the volatility along the way because either I'm right and this will be worth substantially more in the future and I'm wrong and it's going to zero, in which case it doesn't matter what the price is, right? It doesn't matter what the price has been the last three years regardless, frankly. So that's, that's just my personal outlook on it. That's how I've been, I've been treating my investment here. And also, as far as what she said about the, the market cap of gold here, certainly a fair point, but I would also argue that any cryptocurrency that has true staying power, uh, it, it will be used as a store of value also. I think that tons of people that are purchasing Bitcoin as a store of value, uh, if, if they see that other cryptocurrencies like XRP are being used by businesses, that indicates, huh, well, if businesses need this in order to conduct their business model, might it be around for a hot minute? Well, if so, people will, I, th I think, will feel more confident uh, investing in XRP and so they'll get that store of value effect, right? And XRP is a scarce asset and it's deflationary. But anyway, the piece continues. When it comes to portfolio allocations, Madigan says she recommends investors utilize a barbell strategy, which is typically defined as a portfolio that consists of 50% short-term instruments and 50% long-term holdings. And here is another quote from her. I would say a barbell strategy for those who can be patient, patient which m many investors want and look to long-term value creation, uh, put a portion of your allocation in equity, taking stakes in some of the most promising companies in the space, and look at their seven and 10 year returns if you can invest in that type of timeline horizon. Then take the other portion of your allocation and pick three or five or whatever is the right number and diversify and pick a few crypto assets that you really see a story behind, that you understand the value proposition and understand the problem you are solving. Because ultimately, as you figure out that addressable market, uh, you can back into reasonable valuation. And as I said in my example earlier, taking just a 3% exposure to the asset class should result in at least a 15% outperformance versus a traditionally managed portfolio that's non-crypto. And so that also makes all the sense in the world to me because I, I, I've been stating this on the channel the whole time I've been running the damn thing, which is that if you look even over, let's just say the next decade, I certainly believe that, um, that the crypto asset class is going to substantially outperform any other asset or asset class on the planet. I just I feel I could not feel more confident about that. And there are a number of reasons for that, including the fact that, well, obviously, there's a frenzy around this this technology because it's newer and people are still trying to figure it out. And that creates a lot of a lot of interest in and of itself. But there's also barely any money in it. And so given that this asset class is is new and clearly will have staying power, like even if I'm wrong about the long term viability of XRP, which I I don't think I am. I could not be more bullish on XRP. But even if I'm wrong about XRP, the crypto asset class will be here to stay. And, and so to me, that's, that's why it represents such a tremendous opportunity. Uh, so just having exposure to this, I, I just think it's clear, like, even if it's just a tiny percentage of anyone's portfolio, it's going to be the best performing portion right there. And that's why you see there are other, some people out there that, that feel so strongly about that, that they, they end up investing substantially more than just, you know, a little measly like one to five percent of their net worth, which, you know, I'm not, I'm certainly not making any recommendation of any kind. That's, 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 that's more risky. 
But uh, there's like, for instance, Raul Paul, who is uh, very wealthy, and he's, I think he said he put like 98% of his liquid net worth into Bitcoin specifically. Now that's gutsy. But I'd be willing to bet that uh, if you if you fast forward another decade out, that will have proven to have been a wise decision. That would be my guess. We'll, we'll see. You know, I, I always admit, like, I could be wrong. I'm not some sort of wizard here. I don't have a crystal ball that's functional. I do have one, but it's broken AF. So unfortunately, I don't have any insight into <laughs> as far as where the, the, the price for any cryptocurrency is actually going to go here. But I will say it's a very fun ride. So glad you're hanging out here with me. But that is it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.